Hello, what's up, guys? Welcome to Research Tube. Today's video, I'm going to show you the common tips for tr troubleshooting for the Slay Excite circuit. Let's back to the circuit diagram. Here we can see an NPN junction transistor, a 22K resistor, and the primary primary sides of the induction coil and the secondary. The ratio is one to one hundred per primary. So means if you have one turns for the primary side, then you'll have a hundred turns for the secondary side. Now back to the VCC for the power supply, you can use the voltage from twelve volt or nine volt to thirty volt. It's all dependent on your transistor. Now back to circuit diagram. Tell you how does it working. First, the NPN transistor is switched off because there is no voltage to the base until the voltage goes through the 22K resistor and to the base of the NPN transistor and back to the emitter, which close the circuit and let the current flow through the primary side in reverse. The reverse induction make this side positive and the other side negative. The thing is there is a very small capacitance between the top load of the Tesla coil to the ground. The small capacitance which itself exists but plays a very important part in this circuit. Without that capacitor, the circuit can't close itself. So, this capacitor is also very important to the circuit. Now back to the diagram. This, the thing is, after the negative uh, electrons through, uh, flew through the NPN transistor, Close the uh, close the base. Pull the base down below the zero volts. The NPN transistor switched off until it's automatically LC resonance followed by the L, the inductance, C the capacitance to resonance together, forming the oscillation waveform. Here is the common trouble shooting tips. If you have any troubleshooting with the Tesla coil, make sure to check the connection between the secondary. Make sure the, uh, the varnish from the enamel wire was scraped off properly and have a good contact with the base. And make sure the 22K resistor can power on the transistor, even though, even if the circuit does not work, in, your transistor should start to warm up. And if the circuit was working, the warm up speed will be slower. But you can definitely tell with a neon bulb. Or even easier, get yourself a frequency counter, which can tell you the frequency of the exact LC resonance. Because even they say it's 50 megahertz, you can even detect 1 megahertz frequency. Now back to the circuit diagram. So, if you connect the, the primary side of the coil in the wrong way, then it will induce the wrong way for the secondary, which will cause the circuit not to be oscillated. Best way is to flip the primary connections. So, in order to get the upside down effect. Now, back to the transistor, place, place a important role. If you're not sure your transistor is real or not, just get yourself a frequency counter. The transistor does not have to be exactly to be TIP31C, which I will show you here. The thing is, transistor could also be BD243C 
or 2SC2078. And now back to the pin connections. For those three, they have to share the same pin connections. First pin. First pin of the transistor is base. In the middle, the center pin was collectors. On the far right side will be emitter pin, which is very important. The multi-function tester is also known as the transistor tester, can also tell you the pin, which one is it, to make you not get into the troubles of testing the, each component's legs. The most important thing is that your transistor can switch up to a high-speed switching. You can also try to use a super, super good VHF transistor, which I'm showing here, but do not recommend you try it because it's very pricey to spend your money on this transistor, which is SD1274-1. It should also work in. Now for another common type of NPN transistor, you can use BD135 which the first pin is emitter, center pin is collector, and the last pin is base. Now, back to a powerful MOSFET. The MOSFET, you can follow in this circuit diagram. You got to change the circuit diagram with a modulator to modulate in the oscillation waveforms. The best things about the MOSFET, they can handle a loads of, a loads of currents. So, the thing is, if you can hold, handle loads of power to induce on the primary side, then the secondary will in induce even bigger magnets. Uh, even the magnetic field generated from the primary it will induce a huge voltage. Now back to the coil. You don't have to exactly use a that large coil. It could also be smaller. You can use a smaller coil like this. It will also works just for a few hundred turns. Recommend your turns more than 300. Or you could just use a thin coil. Also works well. Like this one, also I handmade them as well. But, but it's even still, your secondary coil can be as thin as this piece of pencil. No pencil that you use for drawing. But for those thin pencils, you might need to use an even higher frequency transistor because the inductors will be smaller. Now, for the filtering capacitors, you don't have to use a large for, uh, values, such as like this one, 2020 microfarad, 2, uh, 25 volt, or 2.2 farad. You could just use a simple, simple, uh, 40, uh, 470 microfarad ca capacitor. It will also work great. But recommend your voltage should be higher than the input voltage, definitely, because you don't want your capacitor to get blow up in the middle of your uh, your Tesla coil project. And that's it for Slayer Exciter SSTC. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Hope I answered your questions. If you have more questions, please write it down under the commentary below, and I will try to answer as quick as possible. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.